This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel. I'm going to give you a stock market update for Friday morning. So uh, one of the things I wanted everyone to understand is that what I do here on this uh, specific video each week is frame out what's taking place in the S&P. I go through all the market conditions, but more importantly, I'm, I'm essentially telling you where the key levels are on both the upside and the downside, what we'd be looking for in either direction. And so what, by understanding what we're looking for, it really doesn't matter whether I do it at the end of the day, Friday or before the day. Um, I, I get a lot of questions about that. But uh, if you understand what I'm trying to accomplish here, you should be able to frame it out for each week. Uh, know what you're looking for and be able to use it to your advantage for uh, the overall market. All right. So let's go ahead and get uh, going with this. But uh, if you have an interest in learning more about some of these techniques, you can start with the book. Um, it's at uh, rabelstockresearch.com forward slash book. Okay, let's start with the market conditions. Um, so sentiment has has jumped up a little bit. I'd still, you know, it's it's actually still kind of borderline. I'd still consider it to be more on the positive side because of the drop that we had. Um, it's not like we've gotten outrageously bullish again, but it's enough to turn it neutral. Um, now, uh, the overbought oversold has moved up off the low. Remember, we got down to 29.75 on the RSI 5 for the weekly uh, S&P, and we're now up to 65. So it's made a pretty good jump in three weeks. Um, it is in the neutral camp, but not quite to overbought yet. All right. So, you know, we're, we're these things are oscillating here pretty quickly. We had a, a quick drop where... Um, when we were up at this peak, we were overbought and very, very bullish, extremely bullish. One of the highest levels of bullishness we've had, and we got this kind of quick drop. But as it dropped down so fast, everybody, all the bulls dropped with it, okay? So uh, that sort of neutralized things, and the rally has sort of um, worked off this oversold condition, all right? So we don't really have anything right now, but we could be working our way back up into that position again. we got to keep an eye out for that. Now, um, the volatility is starting to shift on the daily, which is, I think, a positive sign here. We're going to go into that in a second. No change on the weekly yet. Um, but the trend and momentum on the daily have shifted back to neutral. I'll go into that uh, when I get into the uh, four time frames. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get started with the uh, volatility and look at this drop here. We've seen this plunge essentially uh, with this rally. The rally, even though there was a gap here, we've had, look at the size of these bars. So look at the size of these bars and look at the size of these. You see the difference in that? And that's what's causing this to, to, to really drop down again. Um, so uh, if that continues, which I have a feeling it will, um, but we won't know for sure until we get some kind of a little check back. I mean, right now, the short term RSI on the daily is up at 80. So if we get any kind of a little, I, it looks like the market wants to be up a little bit this morning. But if we get sometime early next week, we get a little minor pause or pullback. This is going to drop over. And um, although I've had it neutral, it's really at the point now where you got to start thinking that the volatility is not in the way for short term trades. So if we got any kind of a little check back or pullback or pause, I would view that as um, as pretty interesting. All right. On the weekly, it has not changed yet. But keep in mind, we're above a rising 18 week. All right. We've got trend and we've got um, volatility. All right. Which is the two things we're trying to measure here. And the trend is fine. There's nothing really wrong with the trend other than the fact that I'm going to show you with what's going on with the MACD. Now, that is not a trend killer, the MACD action. It is it tends to cause it to pause some. But the point I wanted to get across here is that you got to make sure that you're um, understanding what I, when I'm saying the volatility is increasing, it doesn't mean no trading. All right. What I would tell you is that if there's higher volatility, there's a higher propensity for you to get stopped out. OK, of your positions because of the high volatility. You have uh, pullbacks that have uh, bigger bars. And if there's a bigger bar, there's an increase in likelihood that you could get stopped out of a position. All right. And that's the general market having an influence on your individual stocks. So it doesn't mean that you can't play. You can definitely play. I'm not saying uh, go to cash. That's not what this means. 
Um, it, it is a, f- a warning flare that you've got to be a little bit more selective about your timing. Um, as I've said, if and what I talk about in my course, I mean, this is not there's nothing wrong with increasing volatility. If you get um, an oversold condition, uh, you still want to be able to take advantage of that. But um, we're in a position now where it looks like we could have some trading opportunities and uh, uh, certainly worth uh, watching here over the next, I would say, over the next two to four days. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button and also subscribe. All right, as we go into the uh, individual time frames, we got some things that I think are worth discussing that are um, that are pretty interesting. So we had five months to the upside and we had a down kind of pause bar. Um, it hasn't caused this to re-break the 500 mark, all right, which is 5,000 in the S&P. I mean, this is kind of a key level. It looks like it's using that as support rather than re-entering that and maybe forming a uh, pullback. So we could get a check back to that again, some form of sort of sideways action based on what the weekly MACD is doing. But again, I mean, this is not an unhealthy situation. We're working off the overbought condition by kind of working sideways. Um, we're still a little bit too far away here from wanting to play longer term trades. So the longer term, um, the volatility on the weekly is kind of in agreement with what I'm seeing here. I don't know if I'm looking to play the S&P. I don't know that I'd want to play it off of a monthly weekly. I'd probably more inclined to be looking for a uh, weekly daily. Um, if we look at this uh, weekly daily, the uh, weekly pattern, look at the strength of the ADX. All right. And what I point out is strength to the upside is measured on this weekly chart. All right. We're looking at the ADX measurement to the upside. Now, as this pulls back, this is pulling back as well. But I like to measure this on the daily chart. All right. Now, this decline is essentially telling us what is happening on the daily in a lot of ways. Um, because if the daily has turned down, this is going to turn down. Can't really do it. If the daily doesn't turn down, then this will keep rising. All right. There's definitely an influence from time frame to time frame. Just like in this rolls over through the signal line, in a lot of cases, that is where the daily chart is crossing down through the zero line. All right. There is a correlation there. So you want to be aware of that. Um, and But uh, w- w- we can look at here. Is this uh, horizontal line here? We really did not break the RSI. The red RSI did not make a higher high, believe it or not. I mean, we made a big move off the low, but if you look at it, we have an uninterrupted run here uh, with this one little uh, pullback. So if we look at this as a pivot and this as a pivot, we have not made a higher high when you look at this. Remember, you got to use. The DI lines in conjunction with price pivots, you don't you don't just look at this and look at any little nook and cranny reversal like that. If there's any kind of a little hesitation, you can't include that unless price is doing the same. All right. So, so far, we don't really have officially have a contraction phase unless this makes a higher high. Green DI did do that. It's showing that the buyers maybe are a little bit weaker, but we're not. Even though the, the the red, the sellers did move up, we're not really showing any kind of a reversal in terms of a contraction phase yet. Uh, so that's something to watch for, especially now that we've moved up. If we were to come down here, we could move into contraction phase without actually breaking this low now. Um, so just something to be on the lookout for. But what I look at is when I see this roll over, I'm usually expecting another retracement back. Now, if you go down to the daily chart, we did have another bottom form. All right. So we did make a move up and we came back down and tested this low. So uh, as my subscribers know, what I've said is, you know, yeah, ideally on the weekly, you'll get something that shows up a little bit more as a pullback. But in this situation, we went into the zone and came out and did not. So we went into the zone between the 18 and the 40. And then we came out, but we did not go to a new low. And then we showed a lot of strength coming up with the gap back up through the 18. So I think we have to respect this right now. MACD did not cross over, but it did make a little double bottom with price. All right. So and now we've seen green DI start to improve the MACD trying to get back through the zero line. Now, I still think we need a a retracement or pause or pullback on the daily chart being so overbought in the short term. 
But I think we have to respect what's taking place here and uh, and also respect the fact that the the conditions are improving on the daily chart based on the moment on the uh, volatility. Now, last thing I want to point out, and again, I don't go into the, the hourly that much unless I think there's something important going on here. Look at the strength of this move. This is really a, a very, very strong move. This had a huge reading above 50, went through a pullback to the 18, and we didn't even get down below 35. All right. So there's a lot of strength in the short term pattern right now. And, um, you know, to be looking for any kind of a violent move to the downside, I, I just don't I don't see that in the cars right now. Now, anything can happen. We could see that. And if that were the case, we're going to need to see red DI really make a strong move. In other words, if we're going to counteract the strength that we're seeing here, red needs to take over and take control of the situation and make a very, very strong move. It's just not usual. I don't usually see that take place when we have that much strength in the ADX pattern. So what I would be watching for, there's a couple things you can watch for. If we get a couple big red bars, that'll keep that volatility. That'll cause that volatility to pop back up. So if the pullback is too hard, what we could end up doing is forming that pullback that shows up a little bit more on the weekly chart. All right. And you get a little bit longer consolidation. That is still a very high probability. We could still work our way up to this high and come back down. Normally, we only make it to the midpoint and then pull back. But we did that and then we only pulled back to the low. You see what I mean? It, so we've kind of we've kind of done what we would expect off of this failure of the uh, MACD to hold the signal line. Um, so I think we have to respect any kind of an orderly pullback. If we get an orderly pullback that keeps that uh, volatility dropping, I think we want to take advantage of it in the stocks that we're interested in. But think of it this way, because this is stretched away and this is sitting on the 18 week, the time frame that we're trading is right here. It's on the weekly chart, not the monthly chart. All right. So that's the only thing that I would tell you. We went through a period of about a year uh, where we really wanted to be playing off the week, the monthly and the weekly. But now I think we want to go down a time frame, at least for now. Now, if we spend more time consolidating, let's say this does show kind of some weakness here after hitting the high or something like that. It comes down and tests this low a little bit better. Then all of a sudden, this is going to start to look a little bit more attractive. It's going to form some kind of a pinch play. We've only had one pinch play in this move, and now we've broken out. So we could be looking for another pinch play if it pauses. So those are the kinds of things I'd be watching for over the next week um, as we see uh, the market move forward. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.